Because we humans rely so much on eyesight, it helps to see our cumulative impact in visual form, but this can be hard to watch. This is a NASA supercomputer model of carbon dioxide levels in the Earth's atmosphere. So the reds and the yellows are carbon dioxide, the whites and the grays are carbon monoxide. You can see from the northern hemisphere, you can see where the emissions are coming from. This is a day at a time. And you can watch the months go by. U.S., Europe, Asia, you can see that the emissions don't stay in one place by any means. This is our exhale. This is the signature of what we are doing at this time on this planet. This is what we create as a species. And I think it's important for us to see because I think biomimicry has a lot to do with changing the complexion of this signature. So now I want you to watch what happens in June. That's the signature of plants pulling down carbon dioxide through photosynthesis. You can see how the blues and the greens are increasing. It's amazing to watch. Thank you, planet. And as we get into August, it gets even better. We've got fires down in South Africa, uh, in Africa, but in the Northern Hemisphere, there's a lot of trees out. And then you can also watch another signature, which is when those leaves start to, start to drop and suddenly you're into October and you're back to the signature of us as a species. It's really, really hard to watch. Happy New Year. Those greenhouse gases are changing our climate and they're creating conditions that are unlike any that we evolved in or that other species evolved in. The very world that shaped our adaptations, our abilities, that world is changing before our very eyes. But what I learned from this visual is that carbon dioxide can not only be exhaled, it can be inhaled. Organisms value carbon dioxide. Plants use it to make raw materials, sugars, starches, cellulose. Corals use carbon to build reefs. Mollusks use carbon to manufacture their shells. Nature's been writing the book on carbon chemistry for billions of years. And suddenly, it's required reading for humanity. This summer, I spent uh, reading in a hammock. And one of the things I read was the 2014 IPCC report for policymakers, the summary. And I read things that broke my heart, like surface temperatures will remain approximately constant at elevated levels for many centuries after a complete cessation of net anthropogenic CO2 emissions. What, wait, the, the temperatures will remain elevated after we stop emitting? And then I read this sentence. Indeed, a large fraction of the climate change is irreversible on a multi-century to millennial timescale. But look at this sentence. Except in the case of a large net removal of CO2 from the atmosphere over a sustained period. I realized then what it is we shall do together as biomimics. Job number one is this. We have to ask nature for help in learning to reverse climate change. And luckily, as you saw from that, those summer months, life is very, very good at drawing down carbon. We, of course, have to stop emitting greenhouse gases. We, of course, have to use energy in wise ways and move to clean energy. That's job one. But we also have to draw down what's already in the atmosphere. We have to learn how to put it back, 200 years of carbon, how to put it back where it belongs. One of the places it belongs is in soils. We have to do carbon farming in nature's image. Ecosystem-inspired agriculture can accelerate carbon drawdown, can get the prairie 
inspired polycultures, the ungulate inspired rotational grazing, the tropical forest inspired uh, tree and agriculture, agroforestry puts soil carbon down where it can stay sequestered for centuries. The second thing we have to do is begin to see carbon dioxide as a feedstock. Uh, life does. Life sees carbon as a supply chain. It's a local abundant raw material, more local now than ever. So by studying plants and photosynthesis, we now have companies like New Light Technologies that are taking plastics from carbon dioxide, from methane, and actually making products out of it. 50% of this chair by weight is carbon dioxide. Um, we can also make the largest building material on the planet, concrete, from carbon dioxide uh, by studying how corals pull dissolved CO2 to create their reefs. Uh, this is a company called Blue Planet that is now making building materials made from CO2 and seawater. This is what we have to do if we are to return this planet to the conditions in which we all evolved. Uh, not just us, but all the organisms with which we share the planet. We have to recoup the CO2 that we've lost over the last 200 years and return this planet to the conditions that shaped who we are as a species. That's Biomimicry's next frontier.